So imagine the economic system. It's a pyramid. There's a bunch of people at the top. They have almost all the money. That's par for the course for any productive system. Any system that's productive ends up with a distribution like that. It's pretty, it's like a law of nature. And then you move farther down the pyramid till you get down to the bottom where most of the people are, and they're barely clinging on to the edge of reality, right? It doesn't take much of a crisis to tip them into, you know, death. And then you crank up energy prices. Well, what happens is you just take a bunch of those people at the bottom of the distribution, the poor that the left is so, you know, hypothetically concerned with, and you just, they're just done. They go from barely hanging on to not hanging on. And their kids go from having some ghost of a chance of opportunity to having none. And I could see this coming. You really saw it happening in Germany and the UK, you know, where we have this absolute rat's nest of way more expensive energy. And, and this is where it gets extremely perverse. You know, you might say, okay, look, we have to save the future poor. And so now some of the present poor are gonna have to suffer. Well, that's convenient for you if you happen not to be one of those poor people, but let's give the devil his due and say, okay. It's like, that'd be fine with me. Not really. That'd be fine with me if the consequence of your actions, raising energy prices, for example, actually pro produced an improvement in those things you wanted to improve. So, for example, energy is more expensive, but now the air is cleaner. But that isn't what's happened in Germany. Right. What's happened in Germany is energy is like five times as expensive and the coal plants are back on. So it's like, even by your own criteria for success, you failed and you did it at the expense of the poor. And you know, the World Bank estimated, I don't remember how many months ago, it's probably nine months ago, that we're putting 350 million people at, on the brink of starvation because we're cranking energy prices up. And so for me, it's like, that's 350 million people. That's three times as many as the communists killed, you know, in their six decades of trying. And if, you're, if your cure for the planet is, well, you know, we got to put 350 million poor people in jeopardy just so that things are hypothetically better in 100 years, I think. Yeah, I don't think so, buddy. And also, it's a little bit too convenient for me that your prescriptions to save the planet are accompanied by this insistence that the only way forward to that is to give you all the power. It's like mm. there's a bit of a moral hazard in that, don't you think? It's like I'm just saving the planet. Give me all the power. It's like you want to save the planet or do you want the power? And let's let's put the first the second one first because the probability that you're a saint or the messiah is pretty damn low. So that's the danger of the Davos crowd. As difficult as it might seem, is the truth. The poor and less privileged people in society are disproportionately affected by all this climate change, whatever you want to call it. Because have you realized that most of those people who are championing climate change are successful people? Maybe not all, but most of them are successful people, are billionaires or millionaires. So how do you explain this to an African, let's say someone in Sudan who is starving, who hasn't had anything to eat that he or she needs to cut down on his or her carbon footprint because mother nature is suffering? Or how do you explain this to someone in Ethiopia who is hungry that we need to save the environment? That person hasn't eaten anything. That person hasn't done anything to destroy the environment. That person doesn't own anything. So how do you put that kind of message to that person? People must learn to look at what is immediately important. There is hunger. There is starvation. There is famine in Africa. Africa must be focusing on resolving these issues now, we can always talk about climate change. 
And sometimes I don't understand why our leaders in Africa attend this summit. You know, when they hear climate change summit, they just jump on their private jet and whoop their gun. There are serious issues that we should be talking in Africa. There are issues that we, the Africans, should be handling, not jumping when we hear about a climate summit somewhere. Because let's face it, how much CO3 have we emitted in Africa? How much? So we Africans must first develop ourselves. We Africans must first make sure that people can have food to eat. We Africa must first make sure that we can fight starvation and hunger in Africa before we can even get to the climate change agenda. And for the West, they have built their economies, they have built their country, they have destroyed the earth more than any other person has done so. They should shoulder the responsibilities because they have taken more than enough from, the, from Mother Nature. And so they should shoulder this responsibility. And if they want everyone, not everyone, but if they want the vast majority of the population to get on the climate change agenda, they should make everybody relatively successful, averagely successful. If most people or if everyone is above the poverty line, people will get on this climate change agenda. But as long as many people are kept below the poverty line, they won't care about the environment because a hungry person cares only what he or she is going to eat, not what happens to the environment. Someone who hasn't had anything to eat today won't be thinking about tomorrow, won't be worrying about how the environment gets to be tomorrow. So I think Dr. Jordan Peterson is right on point on this one. People must first be lifted out of poverty. And after that, they can start talking about climate change, about how we can rescue the environment. And it's quite a shame or a shock to see that most people really championing this so-called climate change problem are really, really <laughs> up here. They are so successful. It's funny to see, you know, it's funny to see. And they could afford whatever they want, right? Because they have so much that most of us combine. So we are just like at the bottom end of the food chain while they are at the top. They can afford anything. And now they are now like, oh, let's take care of the environment because the environment is dying. They have so much money. They have made so much from the environment. Now they want to impose on all of us that this is what we must do to save the environment. And just so we are clear, I am not saying this as someone who doesn't love Mother Nature, as someone who doesn't love the environment, because I have seen of recently all the droughts, all the flooding, landslide and stuff like that, bushfire. There is something seriously going wrong with our environment but there are also very serious problems with the, with the people and the last time i checked the people were more important than the environment because the people will have to fix the environment so let's take care of the people first and then come back to the environment People are starving and dying. Let's make sure they have food to eat. People are poor. Many people are broke. Let's make sure they have some money in their wallets. And then let's bring forth the climate change agenda. 
So to you guys out there, what do you think about Dr. Jordan Peterson's remarks on climate change? Do you also share the opinion that people need to be lifted out of poverty first before we can fully embrace the climate change agenda? Or do you think that the climate is much more important than the starving and hungry and broke people? Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And please do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this YouTube channel because little bit of good we, like the one you are doing just now, helps the channel a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.